Hey guys, the fact that you have watched this video or you have clicked this video, I believe there is a reason why you are watching me. You may be not even um, up to Forex because the title has said 12 scriptures for every Forex trader. And I know majority of people who are watching me, maybe even you don't do Forex and there's a reason why. Because remember the Bible says that a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the word of the mouth of God. So it is not a coincidence. It's not by chance. It's not by luck that you have clicked this video it is because God wants you to listen he wants you, he has directed you to have some foundation on the word of God. And I am here to share with you guys 12 scriptures that every trader, even if you're not a trader, that you would be meditating every single day. I think something that has really helped me as a trader is to be able to meditate on the word of God. Let me tell you, trading is not easy. But it's still, it's not hard. When you put God in the trading, when you put the name of Jesus in everything that you do, remember the Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. Of course, if you decide that I will do these things and I will, I will be backed by the word of God, it becomes easier. So I want us to go straight into the video to discuss or to give you my, my, my insight about uh, the word of God and about uh, allowing you to be able to be, to have something to meditate upon, okay? So the first scripture comes from the book of John 15 verse 1. Let me tell you when I understood John 15 verse 1. John 15 verse 1, uh, the Bible says that I am a true vine and my father is the gardener. Like Jesus is telling us, I am a true vine. I am a true vine. So I want you to keep meditating on that one, that Jesus is the true vine and the father is the gardener. Let me show you what the Bible says from verse two. The father is the gardener. So he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. So Jesus is saying, I'm this true vine. And because the father is the gardener, he now knows who, what to happen in the vine. So the father comes and cut down every branches that bear no fruit. Where the branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So for me, the word that I have picked there is that what the gardener, the father does with the branches, he comes and try to cut down. If that something doesn't have fruit, he cuts it down. But the one that has small fruits, he comes and prunes it. And I want you to start having a new name. Anytime you lose in the Forex market, you're not losing because you don't know. You're losing because our father is pruning you. You are in a pruning process. You have to agree. You have start to start convincing your mind that I'm no longer losing because I am a failure. I'm not losing because I don't know. I'm not losing because I'm not worth. I'm not losing in this market. I'm not understanding because I didn't get good grades. It's because the father is pruning me. You're in a pruning process. And what the pruning process does, it helps you to bear more fruits. So listen to me and listen carefully. That process, that, that episode, that uh, situation that you're in currently, the reason why you are there, if you apply the word of God, you will know that is the father himself who is pruning you. And let me tell you, there is nothing that is difficult and painful like being pruned as a forex trader. The father will prune you to remove every doubt, to remove every fear, to remove every second guessing yourself, to remove all these thoughts that are not right. So when he prunes you, when he when you are trading in the market, maybe the voice of God comes to you and you, you are being shown what to do and you fail to do that. The father will prune you. Sometimes you lose money. It is painful, but consider it as being pruned. That is John 15 verse 1. Okay, so the next one is John chapter 14 verse 6. And I have said it. I have said Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. Let me tell you guys, if you are a forex trader and you want to make it, that should be your meditation. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The fact that you're doing Forex 
it means that Jesus has decided that Forex is for you. So more so when you're not understanding, I'm talking to those people who feel the inferior, they don't understand, they have done this Forex for a very long time, the family is rejecting them, they don't know what to do, you don't have money, you have rent arrears, you don't have food for, that is the person that in fact that Forex is for you. When Jesus chooses something for you, it is, seems so difficult. Like you're looking, these are, this is where I want to go. This is where I am. But I don't feel like I have even the energy to even make the first step. That is when you know that Jesus has created a way. When it comes to the truth, you need some truth. You need the truth that says, I have the mind of Christ. I will understand Forex. I have, Jesus has become my wisdom. I have to, I have to understand. Jesus became poor for me to be rich. Like that is the truth that we want you to understand. When it comes to life, you have to know that Jesus died on the cross for you to have eternal life. That Jesus came for you, for you to have life and life in abundance. So those are some of the things that you need to meditate Every single morning when you wake up, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. Let's go to the first one, the next uh, scripture. We are scripture three, John 1 verse 5. So in the book of John 1, already you know John 1, 1 says, in the beginning there was word and the word was God and the word was God. So John 1 verse 5, the Bible says that the light shines. I want you to master John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness. The Bible didn't say the light shined. The light shines. It's present. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. In that situation where you feel a lot of darkness, when you feel like you cannot move forward, when you feel like every opposition is coming on the way, when you feel rejection, when you feel like you are, you know, you when you, we feel like we're in our last like our last journey, like if I fail on this, I know there are people who are watching me and you already know, like if Forex I fail, like I don't have a future. The Bible says that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it yet, has not overcome it. So for me, when I wake up in the morning, I say the light has shined in the darkness. And there's a scripture that says that Jesus is the light of the world. So already you, you have the conviction in your mind that who you are talking this light is not the barb light is not the daylight we are talking about the jesus the son of god we are talking about the word itself that the light shines in the darkness so jesus comes to shine in the darkness the word of god like the way i'm telling you there are some words that you'll start meditating and in that situation where you are in you will have peace so John 1, 5 should be your favorite meditation. As a forex trader or any business that you're doing, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness and the, and the darkness has not overcome it. I have never seen a faithful man, a righteous man being forsaken by God. Get it from me and understand. The next scripture comes from Deuteronomy 28. I hope you're writing these scriptures down so that they will help you. Deuteronomy 28. Let me tell you, Forex will come to an end, but the word of God will remain. The reason why I will always emphasize on the word of God whenever I do Forex and everything, because I have the truth that everything shall end, but the word of God shall remain the same. What shall benefit a man if you gain the whole word and lose your soul? What is the benefit there? So, Deuteronomy verse 28, verse 12, the Bible says that the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless the work of your hands, to bless the work of your hands. Every morning, just to wake up and say, Deuteronomy 28, verse 12, Jesus, you have said you shall bless the work of my hands. I, I shall go to the trade. I shall analyze whatever I shall get. I know the work of my hands is blessed. And when you lose, you just go to the scripture, John 1, 5, and say that the gardener, my father, comes to prune everything that has bear minimum fruit so that it can bear a lot of fruit. So 
if you have the verse, Jesus is the true vine and the father is the gardener who comes to prune, you already know, even if you're in pain, it's just the father pruning you and preparing you for the greater things ahead. So I want you to look every morning when you wake up, look at your hands and say, God has blessed the work of my hands. It doesn't matter the situation. I may not have the money. I may not have the capital yet. I may be going hungry. I may have the rent arrears because you know the reason why i keep saying about rent because i was in that situation back in 2020 where you're almost auctioned seven times like every house you go you're being evicted you are being thrown out literally like lights are cut off you don't have food for your kids i remember my kids stayed for one term without going to school because of school fees even at that time this word was still there this word was still written that god shall bless the work of your hands you have to trust on god the other verse and i hope you are noting these verses down the other book we will read from isaiah Isaiah 40. I love, I love Isaiah. I love Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. So Isaiah 40, verse 31. This, this, this has really helped me. This scripture says that even the young, even the youth grow tired and weary, and the young men stumble and and fall but those who wait upon the lord their strength shall be renewed they will mount up wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint imagine the word of god is saying even the young men shall faint even the youth shall utterly fall so sometimes you may have fall so many times like do you know there are people who have fall, fallen and there's nowhere else to go? Like you're at your complete down. Like how can I even explain? Like you are in your lowest of levels. That is the word of God to you. The Bible is saying that the young men shall faint and utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord. Let me tell you, in this situation, let's say in the season that you are in, Thousands and thousands of people are in the same situation. But the difference is, the difference of that is a uh, majority of those people will be impatient, will go to look for a second option. They will go and they will go where God did not say. They will look for their own means. They will look for their own ways. The Bible is specifically saying but they that wait, meaning there is a multitude that will not wait upon the name of the Lord. There are multitude that will be tired. The, the struggles, the pain, the hassles. I'm not understanding this Forex. I've been doing this Forex for five years. I want to quit. But as you are, as you want to quit, there's those that will wait upon the Lord. And let me tell you guys, this is the word that I kept meditating. But they that wait upon the Lord, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall mount, they will be renewed. First of all, when you wait upon the Lord, the Lord renew your strength. Once your strength is renewed, you may be going hungry, but you are happy. You Things are not working, but you are happy. You, you are in joyous mood. You are praising God. You, are, you, you, you have... The, the truth that God still will come through. So your strength is renewed. What you could not do, you start doing things, even if you're still not seeing the light. You start, you open your demo account. You don't have money. Because remember, in the Forex market, when we lose, when you lose money, it is so painful. Maybe you have lost your savings. Maybe you, 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 you just funded account with your rent. Maybe you funded your account with your school fees, the kids' school fees. Maybe you took a, a loan. And when that money is gone, it's so painful. Like you are at the level where you're thinking, what was I doing? I will never do Forex again. But if you wait upon the Lord, there's some strength that comes in your body. You start analyzing the market. You don't have the capital. You go open the demo. You start concerning yourself. Now that is what we say. Their strength shall be renewed. You are able to listen to me and other YouTubers who are here giving information and you're able to understand, okay? 
So your strength is renewed. And after your strength is renewed, you mount up wings. Things that you could not have achieved in 10 years, you achieve it in one year. That is how wings mount. You no longer walk like anybody else. And that's why I tell people, if you can do Forex and you do it well, people take 30, 20 years, 40 years to just build a home. You can take one year to build your home. People take so much time, so many years to buy a car. You can buy a car in two, three months. Like your wings, you, you're now flying. God gives you, it's called the speed, the grace of speed. You're given the grace of speed. You are favored. As in, when you go to, up to a place, when you... You know when you know what happened when I was I was um, a forex trader like when I was beginning to do forex. I told God one thing: God, there's something that I'm always tired about. I am tired of checking price tags in the supermarket. I am tired of seeing so and so. Like I see people like they are pushing a trolley full of things, eh? And me, um, I have a calculator and a, cash, a shopping list. And I'm thinking, oh, I thought I thought cooking oil was was five dollars or five hundred shillings back in Kenya. Why is it six dollars? Like that a hundred bob, that one dollar increment would make me go down. And I told God, I think I need upper dance. I need to go past my knowledge. I need to enter into the supermarket and I don't check the price tags. That's when the wings mount on you. And let me tell you, everything that I wrote has manifested. And that's why I'm confident to come and share the scriptures that I would meditate every single day. So if you're watching me, don't think I'm wasting your time. I cannot waste your time. The other one is Galatians. Galatians 20. And I have not put them in order. I have so many scriptures. I had to cut down to 12. Yeah. So Galatians 2.20. So Galatians 2.20, this is the word that you will know. The Bible says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. How can Christ fail? How can Christ fail? How? If, you're, if you've tried Forex and you tell me, Esther, I have tried for eight years. I have tried for how many years? I have lost. How can Christ fail? He cannot. So you have to have an understanding that once you fail in life, it's a process. You're being pruned. And I will go back to that word, that what the gardener, the father does to your life, he comes to prune you so that you can be a better version. So that when you're trusted, the Bible says, if you're trusted with less, if you're trusted with little, you'll be trusted with much. So what the father does, if he sees you'll be a great person in the future, he comes and start the training immediately. So majority of people, they give up on the training. They give up on the training. You're being trained. You're being pruned. So I have died with Christ. I no longer live. That's why if people call me names, criticize me, you know, I do not have a reputation to protect. I am not, I'm not the one who is living. Is Christ, Christ living in me. So I don't need to keep explaining I'm doing this because of this. Whoever is in me is greater than whoever is in the world. These are the meditations I want you to say every single day. The other one is John 14 verse 12. John 14 verse 12. I hope you're writing. John 14 verse 12. Uh, the Bible says that very Truly, I tell you, it's Jesus speaking. When Jesus speaks in the Bible, you have to listen. You have to listen. The word is speaking. Truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things that, than this because I'm going to the Father. Imagine Jesus promising you that you shall do greater things that he did, more than he did. There was a time... The Pharisees came and they wanted Jesus. They, they were accusing Jesus that he is not paying tax. Eh? And they said, is it good or is it right for people to pay tax? 
And when Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and you remember the miracle of the silver coin on the, in the fish, how did this happen? So it means like I have so much power, like I can even create a wealth. You can imagine the multiplication of two fish and five loaves. And Jesus had that and he multiplied it. And that's, that's, that when you take, when, when you meditate on that and you have a $10 account, if that's what you have, you can just go and meditate on that word. Jesus, you have said, if I believe in you, I shall do greater things. Now, I have $10 account. I remember you had two fish and five loaves. You gave thanks and it multiplied. And you can imagine the, the miracle at the lake where the, the two disciples, they had to, to catch so many fish. They had not catch fish for a whole night. And Jesus said, go further, throw your net at the deep. And they were like, if you know we have been here, but if you trust God, God will always multiply will always multiply if you believe in me. The thing here is believe. If whoever believes in me will do the works I have done. And the Bible says whoever, whoever, there's no limitation. You know, majority of people think that, you know, I talk with this passion and people think, oh, do you, are you a pastor? No, the Bible does not specify pastor, priest, whoever. He says, whoever believes in me shall do greater works. You can imagine what Jesus did. Hey, Jesus would do so much things. Like I like to see the miracles of Jesus and I, I believe I am headed there. I want when I meet someone and they have any problem, I can detect. The, 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 the good thing that I love about Jesus is when you, you remember the man at the pool for 38 years. When Jesus saw that man, he knew, the Bible says, he knew he had been that position for so many years. For me, I want to have the word of knowledge. Like I can know, like I can look at you and, and God speak to me and say, that person is going through this, do this, this and he will be saved, he will be free. That's the level I want. I'm no longer like, you know, people think we are obsessed with Forex. No, Forex is just a channel. Is We are on a journey. We are on a journey. Maybe this is the bus stop. Like, you see how the, the car is moving. You enter in a bus and there are stages. Maybe Forex is one of the stage. And when we are done with that stage, the car will keep moving. So today I may do Forex, but I'm not guarantee I will do it tomorrow because we cannot limit the Holy Spirit. We cannot limit God. We cannot limit Jesus. He is the one who knows our future. The Bible says, I have great plans I have for you. So when God has trusted me with Forex, I will do it with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul. I will do it, okay? So that is John 14. If you believe in Jesus, you shall do even greater things that he has done. So imagine <laughs> you can't trust God for a $1,000 account. You, you, you can't trust God for a $1,000 account. How will you raise this, the dead? How will you heal the sick? How will you open the eyes of the blind? How will you go to the market and cripples are there and you, you revive them and you bring them back to their feet? If you cannot trust God with the smallest thing, how will you do and perform the miracles that Jesus performed? The other one is Act chapter 1 verse 8. I love the word of God. The reason why I love the word of God is it cannot change. It cannot bend. It cannot, it cannot be diluted. Acts chapter one, verse eight. The Bible says, this one, hey, this, this one, this one is top. Eh? But, you, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Hey, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You shall, you shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I remember I was so timid when I was growing up. I was that person who I didn't want to speak in public. I didn't want to speak my thoughts. I didn't want to speak. And then now I'm married. I'm a stay-home mom. I don't have money. I am broke. Of course, that thing continued. Let me tell you guys, when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, when I started to speak in tongues, when I realized who I am in Christ, when I realized my identity in Christ, everything changed. 
Hey, the power, the power rested upon me. Like for me, I believe I can do everything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have to meditate on the word and the word becomes one with me. So the word is saying simply, there is power that will rest upon you when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So the question is, do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit? Do you the, that is the question and the bible says that you shall be witness among jerusalem so in this case i will be witness all over africa i'll be witness globally i'll be witness every end of the earth that is my word and that is the word for you that is the word, word for you, you the, god wants to bless you to be a witness god wants to bless esther Murphy to be a witness and that's why I keep saying, you're not watching me in Kenya, you're watching me in different countries, but that you can comment and I know which country you're watching me from, because that can tell you that this word is active. It is live. It is, it is, it is the word of God. It is breath of God itself. So that is it. The power shall rest upon us when the Holy Spirit comes on us. The other one is Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6 chapter 1. The Bible says, I want to read directly from the Bible. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. You know, I meditated this word for a whole month. Eish. When you meditate on the word of God, there are some things that are transformed in your life. The Bible says, in that, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. The Bible is saying that when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And I, I remember I did even a sermon on this word. You can go and, and search for that sermon. When King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I start asking God, how comes King Uzziah had to die for Isaiah to see the Lord. And I got the revelation that sometimes we have so many things in us. Unless those things die, we will now see the Lord. And sometimes that's why you may watch my videos and you don't understand. Because there's something in you that has not died. Greed, uh, arrogance, pride. Uh, this thinking is your own power. You, those things have to die in you. You, you. you have to focus on Christ. The Bible says that I shall fix my eyes on Jesus. I shall fix my eyes on Jesus. What are you fixing your eyes on? Because according to that scripture, if you go and read, Isaiah would fix his eyes on King Uzziah. Until King Uzziah died, that's when now his eyes were opened. So the question is, what are you fixing your eyes on? So that that's maybe the reason why you're not getting the forex. Maybe it's your job. Maybe the job is what you're saying. At the end of the day, even if I lose, I have this job. So the job becomes the king of Zia. So unless that job, you stop looking at the job and say, God, I know, I know I will make it. It's not even about the job. So you will be able to see God and seeing God is seeing his faithfulness, seeing exactly what he wants for your life. So when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. You have to ask yourself, let me tell you, if there's someone who has been pruned by God is Esther Morphy. Like this version, I, I can tell this is not how I started. I have been pruned. King Uzziah has died in my life. Pride has died in my life. Thinking that I want to protect a reputation has died. Fear has died. All these things have died. They're greed. You know, when you go to the Forex market, you want to make money, buy car, buy houses, live well. Like, I remember telling my husband, babe, I want to kill all my earthly desires. I, I don't find it being amused by earthly desires. If I won't desire to pray, if I won't desire to fast, if I won't desire to read the word, why, why am I desiring to, to go for vacations, to do earthly things? And these earthly things, they will come to an end. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, am I the one who is speaking? And the way I was always looking for destinations, where will I travel to? And I have 
come to realize when you kill the earthly desires, now God gives you exactly what you have killed because now he knows. He knows this one truly loves me. So when these trips comes, they won't come because I have forced them. They will come because someone has maybe planned that trip for me or something has happened. I have to go. So I'm not obsessed. So King Uzia have to die. Imagine King Uzia has to die. Luke 13 verse 6. And this is the story. I, I, this, this, this one, you have to get it. Luke 13. This is a story where Jesus was giving a parable. Luke 13, verse 6. This one, I, this one, you have to get the concept. The Bible says that, Then he told this parable, A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find out a, a, a fruit. So there was this man that he had a vineyard. He went to, to look for a fruit to eat, maybe, and he did not find. So he said to the man who was taking care of the vineyard, for three years, I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and have not found any. Cut it down and why would it use my soil? So this, this owner was angry. Like imagine he had this vineyard and every time he would come to check, the fruit was not there. So he told whoever was taking care, cut it down for three years. Why is it not producing any fruit? Sir, the man replied, that the person who was taking care of the, the, the vineyard, leave it alone for one more year and I will dig around it, fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If it does not, cut it down. Do you know that parable, what it means? Sometimes you may be in a situation where your life is not bearing any fruits. You're not bearing any fruits. When you look at your job, no fruits. When you look at your career, no fruits. When you look at anything that you're doing with your hands, no fruits. And what happens if something does not bear fruit? If you are given a talent and that talent you don't bear fruit, it will be taken away, I'm telling you. It will be taken away. And that's why the Bible says that there were these people who were given different talents. One talent, two talents, five talents. The one who had one hid the talent and it was taken away, that talent. So this caretaker said, give me one more year. I will fertilize. I will dig around it. I will, I will try. And this is what I am doing. This is what I told God. God, I want you, anyone who listened to my voice. What do you think I'm doing to your life? What do you think I'm doing? What do you think? What, what do you think I'm doing every single day? Posting a video to motivate you. People have been discouraged. Let me tell you, people are so discouraged by life. People are discouraged. So I have, like, I am playing the part of that caretaker. I'm telling God, give me more one more year. Give me one more year. And one more year to God can be, I don't know. It's not that one year that you think. Give me one more time with anyone who comes across Estamofri videos. I will transform their lives. I will fertilize wherever they are. I will dig up. I will bring the joy. I will bring the sight. I will bring the strength. These people, they will not perish because the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. If it is spiritual knowledge, I will bring it to them. If it is chat knowledge, I will bring it to them. If it is any other kind of knowledge, I will bring it to them. I will try to fertilize. And once you come, if you find there is no fruit now, you do what you want. But that, that word I told God, God, give me more one chance, one more chance, one more chance. That's the prayer you pray with that scripture. And then we have Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Told you Isaiah have so many uh, verses and I was struggling to pick whichever I will come and share. Isaiah 55, the Bible says, come. All you are thirsty. Come, all you who are thirsty. That is the Bible. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, hey, you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without cost. And when I read this, I didn't have money. Hey, I was like, God, what are you saying? 
What are you saying? Like, come, come, I buy, I buy without money, without money, without, co come and buy wine and milk. What are you saying? And you who have no money, come. What are you trying to tell me? And this time I was so broke. You know, when you are broke, when you don't have a direction, when you, you at your last, th the word of God is the only thing that makes sense to you because it does not change and it is true. The Bible says, call things not be as though as they are. So the Bible is so clear. So I was like, give me revelation. I started to speak in tongues. I prayed, I prayed for revelation. And this is what God said. Why do we work? We work so that we can get. The Bible says that if you don't work, you should not eat. So when we work, we sweat, we, we get tired, we, we, we experience pain, we experience hassle, all that, it is trainings. We work so that the fruit we are getting from the work, it's from straining. So when the Bible says, come and eat and drink with no money, I will remove the strain out of you. So what you would work for 30 years, God will give it for one year. And that's what Forex does. You can enter a market and make $1,000. You just go around and look whoever is making $1,000 in the marketplace. They are working for 30 days, waking up at 5 a.m., going to work, coming back at 8 p.m. at night. They don't see their kids. They don't experience home. They move early in the morning for the bread at the end of the day to put, put food on the table. So Jesus is saying, this the word is saying, that come and do what you want with no money and with no cost. It means you will do bare minimum. Bare minimum. I will bless the work of your hands. We go back to that scripture. You will do bare minimum. And that's why you will you'll start finding that when I started to do Forex, I can afford things that I could not afford if I was employed. I can now afford to help the needy. I can afford to, to come through for someone. If someone says they have this need, I can come through for them because the effort that I put in the market, the gain is too much. That was the revelation. And I was told, God told me, stick to Forex. That is the channel that you can buy without money. Hey, today you can make a thousand dollars, tomorrow five thousand dollars, the other day a thousand dollars, the other day a hundred dollars. As you count, you have made ten thousands of dollars in the market and you don't have a degree. You have not gone to school, you have not gone to university, and you're making that crazy money. It's this scripture coming to life. And guys, finally, 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 I know I've talked a lot, but you cannot limit the word of God. There's no way you can limit the word of God. Daniel 5, 12. That is the last scripture that I want you to memorize and meditate. Daniel 5, 12. The Bible says, he did this because Daniel, whom the king called Bethsaida, was found to have keen mind and knowledge and understanding. Like imagine God speaking these good, great things these good, great things, good and great things about you, that he was keen in mind, knowledge, understanding, and also the ability to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. One person, one, age, yeah. explain riddles and solve difficult problems, call for Daniel. And he will tell you what the writing means. Hey, let's let's read it in Amplified. Let me try to, to read it in Amplified. Oh my goodness. In Amplified, it was because an extraordinary spirit. Hey, an extraordinary spirit. Hey, knowledge and insight. Do you know when you go to pray, that's what you should pray. God, give me an extraordinary spirit. Give me knowledge. Give me insight like Daniel. You have to pray like that. You have to meditate like that. Hey. Hey. The ability to interpret dreams. 
I keep dreaming with markets. I need to be able to interpret. God can give you dreams with the market. He can give you. I'm not lying to you. I have had dreams and it comes to pass. Interpret dream. Clarify riddles and solve complex problems. Hey, I want to be like Daniel. Uh, were found in Daniel, who king named. Now let Daniel be called and he will give the interpretation. Let me tell you, I have talked and have given you the scriptures. Don't allow this video to go to waste. Don't watch. I am not here to psych you. I'm not here to motivate you. I'm here to give you something, something that can build you up. We don't do motivation. We give you something that cannot, money cannot buy. We give you something that no one can steal. If you know this truth, no one can steal from you. This one, you can't lose it. I, this one, you can't lose it. So if you're watching me, you have watched because you needed something to push you the end of this year. By the time they go right somewhere, I want this, I want this, I want this. Then meditate with the scriptures because that is the true prayer. True prayer is when you pray with scriptures. If you want God's insight, if you want the knowledge of God, tell God. If you did it for Daniel, you can also do it for me. Why, why do you think I have the knowledge to do the market? Why do you think the Holy Spirit gives me strategies? It's because I demand it in prayers. The Bible says that I have given you dominion to dominate everything on earth. Even the market, we shall dominate it. So guys, that is it. Those are the 12 scriptures. I had so many scriptures. It was so hard. In fact, I told the Holy Spirit, whatever you put in my heart, I started to write. And as I was writing, I had so many scriptures. And these scriptures, I meditate them every single day. I won't lie to you. They have come one with me. And that's why the scripture that I'm meditating right now is Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. That one, that one, uh, that one, I'm like, oh my goodness. So thank you so much for watching me. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Make sure you share it to at least five people. Let them understand that the word of God can never come to an end. It is the only thing that we live and live forever. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. All the best. Bye-bye. Love you.